y ve el pasto. This picture is uh, from the Codex Atlanticus. It's very curious because, uh, as you can remember, the Codex Atlanticus is the one of the most the huge collection of paper of Leonardo. There are more than 1,200 pages in this giant book. But the problem is that common people, I think 99% of the people, just remember or have seen only 20 or 30 pages of Leonardo because in books, uh, for the last 200 years, uh, they published always the same pictures. Mona Lisa, La Stapper, and 20 or 30 pictures of Machine of Leonardo. But there are much more in Leonardo that I will show you. For example, this picture is one of, is a, is a device, uh, is a mechanical device, but it, it is mixed between inside some device of a chariot and cars and something strange, but it's completely different from cars. Because as you can see, for the first time there is some planets uh, written here, one, two, three, moon, and other two things. This means that this must be a planetarium, not a machine. So this means that Leonardo uh, was curious about everything and made us uh, some design and research on planetarium. So my name is Mario Tadei, I'm working in Milan. For uh, the last 25 years I get passionate about Leonardo da Vinci. I started uh, studying him very deeply uh, way in a new way, I will show you. And if you want to see some of my works, uh, we have, you have to go to Milan, Piazza Scala, and the Museum Leonardo III to see something completely different from the classic Leonardo Vinci. Uh, I show you uh, at the beginning. I want to show you just uh, uh, an idea of Leonardo that I, I understand that nobody knows about this. I mean, only a few people understand the true Leonardo because everybody in the world thinks about Leonardo Vinci as the most uh, beautiful. Uh, how do you say? The, for course, the first genius, why is a genius, and the most important artist, Mona Lisa and Last Supper. But there are only two. Uh, first of all, about uh, the conception of our planet. Uh, it's very nice to see some pictures like this. For example, this is the float, the floating of the human body, the, 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 the study of Leonardo on the bodies. Uh, and look at this picture too. This is the Arno. Can you see there is a, a, similarity, a similarity? And Leonardo itself wrote that the veins of the human body are exactly like the veins of the earth. He understands the planet Earth is something that is living. And he made this comparison between uh, floating of the, of the fluids of the body with the, fl the floatings of the water on, on the whole planet. This is very interesting because it's the first method that is something going to do something like the, the Gaia uh, principle. But it's true because in a lot of paper of Leonardo you find this information. So I will not talk uh, about Leonardo Vinci because you know you have all books and Wikipedia, blah, 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 blah. Uh, this, again, Mona Lisa, La Supper, and this, this man. Uh, the problem I found, uh, I get patient with Leonardo when I was young. Every, every young children in Italy loved Leonardo because he's a genius, because he did everything, he invented the parachute, the, mechanic, the, the tank, the helicopter, uh, whatever he invented, the, the multi-gun ship, uh, and a floating device, uh, giant bridges, uh, and this one, uh, one is one of the most famous pictures. But where is the truth? Because Leonardo made just only two paintings, all the people knows about only these two paintings. There are about 20 paintings, of course, but they are not known to the common public. And they are not a lot of paintings, because Leonardo did paintings for money, not for fun, for money, because he was paid to do paintings. But he made a few paintings, very few. Why everybody call it the, the most important artist in the world? So this is a, uh, what I learned from Leonardo when I was a kid. He invented everything, all oh, the device, the, the parachute. Uh, I, f I found this machine in every museum so, of the world, and in Italy, Rome, Milan, in books. Uh, but about 15 years ago, I found something very strange. For the first time, Carlo Pedretti teach me how to do this, uh, uh, instead of re reading books from other scholars uh, and going to exhibition, I started to read for the first time, this was my mistake, directly, you know. 
and I found some difference between what you, the, the, the movie, Hollywood movie tell you and the truth. Let's start from this. Everybody thinks that this is Leonardo da Vinci, but this is not true, because the name of this picture is Vitruvian Man. This means that it was made by Vitruvio, is not Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci made the drawings. And the very bad problem, I was very angry when I discovered this, it is very stupid because we can read it. Leonardo, in the top of the point in the, of this portrait, said, Vitruvio Architetto made this. So it was very honest. The problem is that uh, in one year of the year, people does not read anymore. They just see, oh, this is a wonderful project of Lisa design of Leonardo. It's not true. This is the Vitruvian man. And Leonardo Vinci has many other artists that copied it. The problem is that Leonardo was so good at paintings and drawings eh, that he stole the idea of the Vitruvian man. And this became the copyright of Leonardo. But this is not true. This is a huge problem about copyright. I, we don't have time here. So, the problem is the same with the machine. I discovered that no one of this is a design of Leonardo. Leonardo never invented a parachute, never invented a bike, a car, a multi-gun machine. These are, are stupid stuff. For example, this device uh, that put water from bottom to there, you know about this. This is the Archimedes screw, of course. You say, of course it has an Archimedes screw. But what happens if you put an Archimedes screw in all the museums in Milan, in Rome, in Italy, and you say Leonardo da Vinci? All the students of the world will believe and will learn that this device is invented by Leonardo. This is a huge mistake. I'm very upset and very angry with all 99% of the books and 99% of the exhibition around the world. They are not telling you as the truth. And this is a very bad thing. You know about this, but we are only one zero 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 one percent of population that will believe that Leonardo da Vinci did everything, and this is a big mistake also for uh, educational problem. So uh, this is one of my research. Uh, can you see here? This is the tank of Leonardo that Leonardo copied from Valturio. This is uh, another machine of uh, that came from. Assaulting a castle, there are hundreds of these machines, but it was copied by Francesco, from Francesco di Giorgio. They, uh, he copied from Tacola because copying was the job of Leonardo. I'm sorry to tell this, and every time I say this to the children or to the people, they can be very angry. No, you're not fine because Leonardo is a genius. No. As you remember, Leonardo went in school when he was young, he went to a school, okay? When you are in a school, what do you do in front of the blackboard with the teacher? You are copying from it. So Leonardo copied from all his young life things in the parochial houses. So he, to copy, he learned it. Because learning, copy is the same stuff. When he was older, he began to study much more and inventing new things. But all 99% of the machine, of the war machine I saw in museums when I was younger, and also today, I'm sorry for this, I will not tell you which museum, but you understand. They are copy, copied by, from, by Leonardo from the De Re Militari, was a milione tractatus with hundreds of war machines. So Leonardo copied this war machine one by one. Not one, every machine he copied. Why? Because when he was in Milan, in the front of Duke of Milan, he had to uh, give him weapons of mass destruction because he promised the weapons to be hired for money from the Duke of Milan, not because he was a painter. So Leonardo came in Milan not as a painter, but as a war engineer. And because he was not a war engineer, he made the first curriculum of history a false, fake curriculum. Because he said to the Duke, I'm able to do one, two, three, four, five, eight points. They are not painting. They are war machine. Leonardo promised the Duke to build a war machine, uh, weapons of mass destruction, because that was the way to be hired by the Duke. So the Duke paid Leonardo, and Leonardo, what he did? He was not an engineer, so he had to study. And what you have to do to study? You just get a book and copy machine one by one. The story is strange because Leonardo was a very good painter and drawer man. So why he was copying the machine, 
his design and was much more beautiful than the other one. That's why we remember him, because he made a good presentation. So, the bad Leonardo copied and saw things, he stole the design, because he was able to present much more better. This is a very strange thing. This means that if you are able to present some idea that is not yours, you can steal that idea. This is the first Leonardo. The problem is this. There is not only this, this stupid, I'm sorry, 20 or 30 pages of Leonardo. There are not this, only this 30 or 40 stupid machine of Leonardo. We have found that there are 6,000 pages of Leonardo. Where are these pages? If you go to a museum or you buy a book, you will only see Mona Lisa, La Sapa, 10 paintings and 20 or 30 pages. My job is to study in deep all these 99% of, of the pages and I do a, do, a deep, a, do a deep study connecting every pages of Leonardo together to understand where, where is the project because as you do, you never use only one paper to do a project. You, have, you will use hundreds of paper. Today we use a computer with hundreds of paper. But Leonardo did the same stuff. So to find a one machine, you don't have to just see one page. You have to follow all the, 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 the path in the page of Leonardo. This is just one example of 6,000. My job is to say, okay, this is not an ugly, bad page of Leonardo. This is, this, is, this is why they don't publish it and they don't show you in the museums, because it is very bad. Can you see, there is nothing beautiful in this page. But believe me, there are much more secrets and interesting things in what is single pages than in the full Last Supper or Mona Lisa. My job is to find, to try to find what is inside. You are in the Department of Physics. I'm asking you, what is this device? It's very hard for the first time, and it's very hard also because Leonardo never wrote what it is. Because he don't need it, because it's his own study. He's not a presenting a paper for the Duke of Milan, very beautiful. No, this is very bad because Leonardo has just need the need to fix an idea on a paper. So this device is an, a device for the ticking clock, scappamento of the, of the clock, tic-tac. This is an improvement of the shape of the two levels to make work much more better. This is a real engineer. This is a real genius because he's, he's trying to to perform a much more better system that he understands it is perfect, but he can improve it. So this is, here you can see the Leonardo da Vinci copied, uh, the man who copies, that transforms himself, the Leonardo da Vinci that is studying and developing things. So here you can find the genius, not in the other drawings. For example, here on the top, uh, there is a strange mechanism, but then inside the, uh, a robot, an android, Leonardo wants to build a robot army to make it work like a puppet, not go to war, but just for the theater, for example. So my work is to divide each one of these paper in all this design I found and try to understand what is inside. It is incredible, but can you see this section here? This is very complicated, check section of a machine. This is not a clock device, but it's a, a, a device to make a planetarium, a mechanical planetarium. It is incredible, but it's true, because Leonardo was, was able to, to see around him some planetarium, but he understand, he can, to understand the planetariums that he had to see, he had to study in depth all the mechanism, and these pages he's trying to understand what, how to improve these machines. So, in one single page, you can find more than 50 new ideas of clocks, devices, and planetarium, and also some pieces of the robot. This is incredible, one page in the 6,000. So my work is to find these bridges between different world of Leonardo, because the human body study of Leonardo is not just that Leonardo is, that is anatomist or, no, because Leonardo was the first man and the last one who understand that everything is connected. So while he was studying the human body, he understand that that studies is useful for his architectural studies. He understand that to study architecture and the human body is a good way to become an engineering 
that was able to build in roads. All was joining together. And of course you understand now that if you study in deep the human body, you became a better artist because when you paint the Mona Lisa, you know exactly where are the bones of the Mona Lisa. That's the secret of Leonardo. Study everything. Today we have completely forgot this. Because of the fragmentation of the science, nobody is able to study everything. But Leonardo was the very, very lucky because he was the last man who was able to do something like this. My work is to build these models, the real, the real models of Leonardo, one by one and see they, if they work or not. This is the, the robot, this is the mechanical lion, the dragonfly. For example, there, there, are, there is no a flying machine of Leonardo. This is a big mistake. There are as many flying machines as animals that are able to fly. So in our museum, we, we have uh, more than 20 different flying machines, not only one. This is the dragonfly, then we have the pattern. This is very important because what we have today in uh, on, um, what is the name of the first rover on Mars? Opportunity, what is the first one? I don't remember. What? The first rover on Mars. This is the same idea 500 years before. A device, little device, like a little car, that is able to move itself with a self-propelling energy inside. What Leonardo can be used? The only device that was able to create the energy was a, a spring engine. So he put a clock, like a spring engine, inside a car, and with little, this little device was able also to be programmed to go right, left, right, or front. Very simple. The idea of Leonardo was to use this in a theater, covered with a puppet. So when you see this machine moving 500 years ago, it was like magic. But we have today the same stuff, so this must be the first robot of history because it's programmable, it can be used far from you. Leonardo was in two meters, today we have him on Mars, but it's the same principle. Uh, we, we have musical instruments, and in our museum we have, we have a lot of interactive stations where people, and oh, this device is very nice for you. I think that this device is the most important research of Leonardo instead of the flying machine. Because, can you see this, that looks like a meal? In books I found when I was young that Leonardo invented the Idol City. It's not true. He was in Milan. In front of him there was the Idol City. So he sketches beautiful pictures of buildings, but the idea of Leonardo, turning the pages of the manuscript on the left, was to create devices inside the building. I, sh I want to show you this with this because it's very nice. So, in one of the many books of Leonardo, Leonardo never did only the Codex Atlanticus, and the Codex Atlanticus is not a Codex. It's a collection of paper. But the real Codex of Leonardo, I'll show you. Can you see it? Okay. This, so this is one of the many books of Leonardo. Today we have only 20, but maybe Leonardo had something like 100 of these. Some are lost. So if I turn the pages here, I'll show you how many. There are 200 pages. In each one of these pages, there is a research of device for uh, water, world device. This is the ideal city, but this is not the ideal city from the outside. The ideal city from inside. So Leonardo made this section to understand what is the best architecture to create a device inside the building. As I said to you before, this is a, a bridge uh, you can build in your house if you want to be safe. Uh, this is a device to clean your house. This is a device, to, a strange device, because if I, if I turn the pages here, I found some of these strange mechanisms. And this is, I, I call it the real Leonardo. No one has studied this machine before because it's impossible to understand, because Leonardo here does not wrote what this machine is. This is just one little piece of the many pages I have to find to rebuild this machine. We don't have time, so i show you directly what is the, this invention. This is a device that looks like a mill, but Leonardo says, okay, if you have in your ideal city, you need power. The power in the ideal city was the water that is going to flow, okay? But what happens if you don't have water? You need water that works for themselves. So Leonardo created this. This is one of the many, there are hundreds, of mo perpetual motion machine. Leonardo wants to put, uh, um, how to say, uh, mercury 
inside these boxes. The idea is that this device will rotate smoothly, and from the left, the machine will be balanced about something 200 kilograms more on the left. So the idea of now that this machine must be beginning spinning, giving you free energy. We know today that it's impossible to build it. But the important thing is that Leonardo was trying to find a way to build this machine, to create free energy for the city. And this is the most advanced and incredible design. Can you see here this device? Leonardo was convinced that he, in mechanics he will find this, the answer. But he found that there is a problem of the friction. So here in the top, can you see this device? It's a device to, to smooth the friction and free the friction. We don't have time to see all the book because uh, there are too many pages. Uh, so I will I show you okay, some things. Uh, we switch off this. Uh, and I, I show where we were here. <coughs> so, hundreds of machines, thousands of pages. For sure, we can find also some related to physics and astronomy. And I will show you today this device. Oh, this is the, 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 the ideal city, but not because it's beautiful or ideal, because it is uh, all full of mechanism inside the building. This is a scheme I made uh, from the spoon to the city with all the in machines and instruments and pumps inside the buildings to make the city work uh, alone without the need of powering source from outside. Of course, we have one machine. Oh, this is the last uh, machine I built in Milan. You can find it. It's the biggest <coughs> time machine I ever built. It. And I want to <coughs> just to show you this uh, secret to you. Can you see that this machine is not, uh, um, the wings are not full of uh, a flat plot? Because Leonardo, I, I see a lot of museums around the world, I see a lot of books with this device, with the, the, shape, the shapes of the, the, the wings, and a clot, a clot on the top. So also a child can know that if you do something like this, will not, you will not fly. Leonardo was not stupid. So he understands there is different stuff to do. So for example, in his studies, he understands that to, to copy the nature was the answer to all the problem of mechanics. There are two gods. Leonardo had two gods. One is a name, the god of the name was a mechanics, and the other one was natural. He, he knows that mixing these two things together, he can do everything. The example is here. He understood that the eagle has a lift, okay? And when you press the air, the, the left of the, of the eagle will press on the air. When you rise your uh, wings, the air will flow through. This is exactly, exactly what Leonardo did. So copying the nature using mechanics, so Leonardo was able to imagine all this kind of machine. Let's go here. This is the paper where Leonardo, is one of the many papers where Leonardo put the ideas to, to build a device that is a, um, a planetarium. But the difference between this de design and the other de design is different. Can you see that there is a, this, there are lines that are very big. This is not a sketch by using a hand. This sketch means that this device and this uh, mechanics here must be in scale one to one with the paper. This is a, something very extraordinary because in 90% of the books of Leonardo you find ideas just sketches. But in these cases, these sketches is in a design scale one to one. This means that Leonardo tried to build this machine for sure. Again, here, look at how many devices. These devices are clocks, can you recognize this? And there is something that looks like a uh, heavy, heavy uh, uh, it's not a pendulum, but I found something that looks like a pendulum in another uh, paper. So let's go here to see, here it is, number, I don't, I don't remember the page, but there are so many devices this is the, the escapamento mechanism for the clock device. And this is another device for a, the most simple clock you can imagine. Just two, uh, one rope, one big uh, heavy uh, block of uh, iron here, 
and a simple movement can make you uh, see the simplest clock you can see here. And this device is, is to, to, keep, to uh, stop the, um, the, the, the clock from going very fast. Let's go here, for example, this is a new device that uses uh, air to, to break the, um, the movement. And mix it in this device, in this clock, as you, as you remember, maybe, the, uh, the, the people that are working with clocks uh, are also people that were able to create, uh, elect not electronics, um, how to say, androids. So at the time of Leonardo, there are these puppets that are moving like a clock. So Leonardo here puts a lot of devices that look like robots. Here there are more than 20 subjects in the same paper. And here is the, the connection. For example, this connection, this device for the planetary system, is not an idea of Leonardo. This is Leonardo that is studying a device that was there in the time of Leonardo, but Leonardo was able to see through the mechanism and he, because he remembered that the first job of Leonardo, copying to study, so half of the documents of Leonardo, that is Leonardo that is trying to copy, that means that he's trying to do understanding because with copy you are understand. Leonardo understood that the only way to, make, to understand mechanics was to copy and draw it in a different shapes. Because if you don't understand a machine, you are not able also to copy it. There are hundreds of paper of ancients, uh, Greeks, Roman Empire, and there are books of uh, uh, ancient uh, engineers before Leonardo, where you can find design of, of mechanisms that they are not very beautiful, or not, not working, because that people does not understand the machine. But Leonardo, because he understood the machines, he was able to copy them. And while you are able to copy and to understand, you are able to also to understand where are the problems. And you can improve them. So the second job, after Leonardo was 30 or 40 years old, was to copy, understand, improve machines. This is the most, uh, I think, the, the most advanced design of Leonardo to create um, uh, the, the fan blade was to, to, uh, to stop the machine, to create a device that uh, works very well like a clock. But look at here. Leonardo is studying the clocks of the time to understand not only how they work, but how to, the, to improve them using different technology and different uh, uh, piece of, not wood, piece of, uh, um, of material, uh, different materials. Because he understand that the friction was one of the main problems. So he was the first uh, like mechanical engineer in the world. Uh, again, one of the most <laughs> complex problems, you know that today is very easy for you. But think about the time of Leonardo. Who was right, the Ptolemaic system or Copernican Copernican system? Of course, uh, today you know the answer. But at the time of Leonardo, there was no answer. There was two, two ways of seeing things. The problem is that in, this, in the uh, the Ptolemaic system was very easy, but the problem is that if you look at the, pl the, the planets, they will go not very easy, they will do a, a very complex uh, movement around the Earth, right? So, Leonardo tried to understand how to build a machine that was, is imitating the movement of the planets in the Ptolemaic system. Here is this, this device, it is very complex, but again, Leonardo was not inventing it was improving it from this page I found. And Leonardo was also copying the sh the, the, this shape in his design, you can find here on the, on the top, on the bottom. So here is the font of, the font of Leonardo, and this is Leonardo that is starting to study and improving this device. This device will make the, the planets go around in, a, in this system. It is like a, in the orbit of the Sun and the orbit of Venus around. So today, we have no problem to understand this thing. But again, think about Leonardo Vinci 500 years ago. It was very complex because there was no answer. It was a, a free uh, a campo di studio, a free way to understand things. He was able to do everything. The most incredible things I found is this. Okay. Uh, I don't want to say this uh, loud, but I found that this device looks exactly like a pendulum. This device upside down, 
Can you see the, the I cannot, uh, have, I don't have a laser pointer, but the, this device, from my point of view, looks like the first attempt to create a pendulum clock. Uh, I want to show you this, this one of the machine I tried to rebuild for Leonardo. This is exactly the same machine. I have, maybe I have an animation here I want to show you. Let me see if I have it. Here it is. This is a, the, one of the many projects of the Leonardo Vinci Astronium. And the idea is that uh, also that Leonardo wanted to first study this device. He does not care to build this device because there, there was this other problem. There are so many designs of Leonardo, work, work weapons, uh, architectural stuff, uh, mechanic stuff, that Leonardo was uh, not able to find the time to build one of these. You know about how many machines Leonardo built? People imagine uh, that Leonardo built a lot of machines. But he just made only two machines. The mechanical lion and the lira for the duke. These are the only two things that we know from the books that Leonardo did. All these other devices are just ideas. And he does not have the time to develop everything. Uh, I don't have time to explain all this, but I show you the most important documents for you for Leonardo Vinci. If you want to find it, it is the name is the Codex. Uh, um, this is the, the the documents that show you the planets, uh, the all the connection between uh, the moon, the light, uh, and the sun, and we, all the studies of Leonardo Vinci for this kind of new science. But we don't have time to explain everything. I just want to show you some very nice uh, stuff. Because in this book that is not big, is one, is one of the many books, Leonardo was a physicist. For the first time, he uh, think about uh, the things that he was looking at, uh, the moon, the star. He does not believe in books uh, before him. And he started the, the, his studies from scratches. Here you, you can find a lot of uh, incredible ideas and uh, strange stuff. I want, because I have only five minutes, I want to show you just maybe one or two of these. Uh, for, the Zen, for example, uh, when, what are these? This is, of course, is a, the planet with the, the moon and, and uh, the calculation of the shadows, uh, the eclipses, blah, blah, blah. You will know about this and maybe uh, there, there's someone else that will talk about this. Of course, because Leonardo studied geometrics, he was a perfectionist. So not only these are the first beautiful design I ever made about these this, uh, schemes, but it's a, a, a true idea and true uh, science between. But I don't want to talk about this, I want to talk to you about this. What is this uh, strange mountain? mountain? This is not a, um, a clock device. This is the moon. Uh, what I'm going to, say, to show you is very complex to understand. When I was younger, to be honest, uh, 20 years ago, I, I was looking at the moon, and my question was, why the moon is completely white and full of light, in the center as in the, as in the side of the moon? This is a very big problem, because if someone does not answer it, it's very complex. Because if you, do, if you have a spur, and this spur uh, getting light from the a source like a sun, of course you must have some part in dark and some part in white. Everybody has knows this, and also Leonardo, that was a painter, knows exactly how the shape shadows goes around a round object. Why the moon is completely is looking flat? If you think about that, and you have to explain to a child, it's a very complex problem. Because on the moon, you don't have the shadows going around. It looks like a flat moon. Like the people that believe that the Earth is flat, the most, you look at the moon and you can see it's flat. Why there is no shadows around? Leonardo was very obsessed about this. He cannot understand. But the answer, how can you, 500 years ago, can understand why and give an answer to this. This is a very beautiful story, and in my last five minutes I will do just these deep uh, things about Leonardo. 
imagine to be Leonardo, you have to give them an answer. How can you do that? Because you are, you cannot go to the moon. You must have an give answer. So the answer of Leonardo was this. He understood that the, because of the reflection of the sun, this is your eyes. Can you see your eye here? You are here, and you are looking at the moon. The, the, here you have the source of the light that is the sun. That is, uh, all these lines are the lines of the light. They are, of course, they must bounce through something that is reflecting 100% of the light. In this point, 100%. This 100, this 100. Also here on the on the side, there is something that must reflect 100% of the light. Otherwise, you will have shadows there, right? So Leonardo is beginning to draw this little drawing to understand the answer, to give an answer. The only answer Leonardo can give is that to, today we have this kind of look of the moon. But common people, child and people that does not know about reflection cannot believe that uh, why the moon is not like this. So shadows and these glimpse parts here. But it's exactly the same amount of light from every point. Because Leonardo tried to understand, tried, he does not know what is on the moon. So it, there is, must be something that is reflecting in every part. So the answer of Leonardo is in these pages, it's very nice. Okay, here you have some examples, but we don't have this. Oh, this is the most important part that we should remember is what we show later. We have the first uh, drawing sketches of the moon that is perfectly 1% uh, overlappable with the real moon. But the problem again was Leonardo also, too many things to, to explain here, we don't have time. So the answer of Leonardo is incredible. It is incredible because it is completely wrong. But the important thing is not that this answer is wrong or right. And you know about this because you are in this school. The important thing is the process to arrive to that answer. So Leonardo, and I ask you, what, can, what there is that can be there on the moon that is reflecting every point the light? The only answer of Leonardo, and Leonardo was very, very strong with it, it must be this, he states, he will continue his word. The only thing was an ocean, water. So Leonardo imagined in that the full moon was full of water, with all the wrinkles of the water, that is reflecting the light. It was the only answer for Leonardo. So he wrote uh, uh, a lot of pages about this, saying that there must be water on the moon, because it is reflection in this way. Today we know that the problem is, is very simple, because we have dust, and dust is a, every point of dust is a point of reflection. It, it, it is, a, we call it, in the computer graphics, opacity. And because you can see here, if you imagine to have a bowl or whatever you want, and put on the bowl uh, powder, okay? This reflection will give you the idea exactly what is the moon today. So every point uh, it gives you the exactly amount of reflection because there is no uh, reflection like in a mirror. Here we have the mirror moon, we have the plastic moon, and we have the moon full of dust. Uh, I don't have any more time, okay? But I want to give you this, this incredible other piece of Leonardo in the same pages. Leonardo understood that the Earth is a sphere inside the, the space. And understand that, that, that if you want to find the point of gravity, you must search it in the middle of this giant sphere. But because there are um, a lot of seas around the Earth, that they are moving. They are not to understand that, that they are seas and, and, how to say, the continents in the time move themselves. So, Leonardo was so obsessed by uh, mathematics, geometry, and the research for the answer, that he uh, is trying to understand that, uh, and his idea is this. If there is a land on, on the north of the global Earth that is moving, this means that in the other part of the Earth, the Earth there must be the exactly the amount of, uh, of things that is moving in the opposite way. So Leonardo imagine the full Earth, full of water inside, with this giant piece of uh, geometrics that are continents, that are moving inside the Earth, 
to, to constrain it and to keep the same amount of energy around it. So again, this is completely wrong, but the beautiful, and I'm stopping here, of Leonardo in this new way of, of painting is that we have more than 6,000 pages of Leonardo, completely unknown to the people, and half of them are something uh, incredible like this with errors of Leonardo, but the best part of Leonardo is the process to study things and to have answers for everything. Thank you a lot. So we have okay. several minutes for questions, please. Yes. Please. Uh, can you say something more about the pen? That is one century before Galileo. I know, I know that this is very hard thing. Paolo Galuti will be very angry with me. But I found that, I'm sorry, but I found that skills. I'll show you again. We must not call it pendulum, otherwise we, we have to rewrite books. But the problem is that uh, for a long time this page uh, of the manuscript uh, L was uh, seen uh, in this shape. Uh, when I study Leonardo I know that some pages must be turned upside down. So this device must be turned upside down. And this is the shape you can see on the, on the top right, okay? So that device uh, must be something like um, a scappamento inverted. So Leonardo think instead of make, put, pointing the scappamento on the top to make the, the clock device uh, stopping, I put the scappamento down to make it move. I don't know if this is the pendulum or not, but it, it is. I remember the day I found it for the first time before the video. <coughs> We don't know the answer, but it's very beautiful to try to study it. We have to start studying these things because maybe what Pentum was the idea of Leonardo before Galileo. Okay? Thank you for, for all the, the stimulations. The Thank things. you. Finally, search it and help me to understand if it is, not, it is a Pentum or not. Okay? Yes. Thank you. 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 Are there documents uh, uh, concerning the influence, if any, I think yes, of Archimedes on Leonardo? But documents written by Leonardo? Absolutely yes. Uh, you remember what I told you before? Twenty years ago, or more than ten years ago, I started studying in a different way Leonardo. Instead of just reading books from scholars, I started reading directly Leonardo. And Leonardo is very honest. Every time he copied a machine, he wrote, I am copying this from Galileo, I am copying this from Hellenics, I copied this from ancient people. I show you, for example, you say Archimede? Yeah, uh, I show you the device of Archimede. I found it. Uh, I hope to find no, it. Not only for the single no. machine. No. I say influence of Absolutely. ideas. Yes, yes. Of method. When Leonardo had to start the, uh, some ideas, he before studio sketches, he know that he has to study. And he studied Archimede. He studied. He studied every every man, heavy ancient uh, scientist before him. And we have proof because Leonardo wrote. I'm I'm doing this because the Archimede did. Okay. There is part of exactly Leonardo is from. I, I, I got it. Uh, along the same lines, the in, in general Hel Hellenistic uh, influence. Of oh the, yes. The thing that you call the uh, you know that, that source system mechanism. I think the Antikythera mechanism. Oh yes. Yeah, right? so. Oh Leonardo copied those. I, I use always copy, but he's studying also Hellenistic uh, engineering. And also, I found, for example, I give you an idea. Uh, if you go in, in all the city around the world, you find the bridge of Leonardo. Okay, these little bridges with the uh, things uh, in, uh, in cars that I, we have also in our shops, uh, in our books uh, shop. Uh, I believe that 20 years ago that was that was an idea of Leonardo. Then I found that he copied from Tacola and uh, Francesco Di Giorgio. But then I found that the same device was 500 years before in the China Empire. So, of course, you know the answer that nobody invents everything from nothing. Everybody has, uh, uh, has studied things that has done studies before. But the idea, for example, what is the meaning? Uh, when the, in the China Empire, that bridges was used for civil purpose. Then they used the same device for war purpose in, uh, in Italy. 
So the, the idea is the same, and the more you study, I will, I will say to the children, if you want to be Leonardo, you have to study history, and not only one history, all the history, because the more you study, the more you have things to mix with, with nature to invent new things. I'll, I'll be interested in the creative process, so if you can say something about So how many things do you think that Leonardo could, could, uh, could take parallel to, to each other. So Good question. The, the, we don't have much time, but i show you. The process of, of inventing things is this. Look at the first page of the book. There. The first page is not here, but is here, because Leonardo was left-handed. So all the books of Leonardo are from the right to the left. The process to invent flying machine is this. First, study the nature. Observe how these different animals are able to fly. And they are, uh, can, can you see? Yeah, there are different, and there are animals, fishes that are able to fly. So first observe the nature. Then study the history to find the, the mechanics, how to create, create an object, and then mix thing to, things together, you can invent your things. But believe me, look at these pages. There are arts, war, and this war machine was inspired by a scorpion. It's a mix between an Hellenic, Hellenistic uh, uh, machines with a scorpion. And you can find the answer here, on the top there is is Scorpio, because the idea is came from the nature. Ok? Sì, io avevo una domanda, volevo sapere riguardo alla questione appunto del copia non copia, eh, quindi di un'eventuale innovazione no, di Leonardo, yes. per esempio riguardo l'uomo vittoriano, eh, lei per caso conosce i lavori dell'architetto Manenti Valli? Eh, che ha studiato sia eh, l'uomo vitruviano sia eh, l'annunciazione degli uffizi e quindi ha ritrovato la sezione aurea come modello eh, ci vorrebbero tre ore vi dico solo questo we have to be, we have to meet, so. last, last, last answer this is a good question for you all the people around the world is, are asking me where is the, the, the golden ratio in the vitruvian man where is the golden ratio in uh, I didn't find it because if you read the, the documents of Leonardo, of the Vitruvian man, inside there is no golden ratio. It's only proportion of the human body to create much more better the paintings and much more better architecture. But believe me, there is no, inside that, is, there is no golden ratio. You can find, of course, if you know what is the golden ratio, you can find the golden gate ratio all around you. But all this does not mean that Leonardo wanted to put the golden rats inside the Victorian man. I know this is a very strange answer, but believe me, in every part of the body of the dead lady, you will find that this shirt, you will find the golden rats. But the, uh, it's you that they are looking for that. You understand my question? Of course that Leonardo studied also the golden rats with Pacioli, with the Divina Proporzione, that uh, after that Divina Proporzione, he came to the golden rats. Etc. Etc. There are too many things to. You have two hours to explain that something. Last short question and short answer, please. Thank you very much for your beautiful talk. Uh, I just wish to know what was driving Leonardo in making so so many projects, thousands and thousands. Because I imagine he was not paid for that. So was it curiosity? Was it his uh, obsession? How? <laughs> the answer is curiosity, and because you are a lady, you are a wife. Um, Children, no. Okay, there is a, a little secret of Leonardo. He wrote that if you want to to have a lot of time to create all of this, you must be alone. Because if you are, we have a wife. Or a wife you have a whole or just half of your life. This is very nice about Leonardo. And Leonardo was free. Also. Thank you. Okay, let's take it.